I'm gonna take you on a journey back to the past. Specifically to 2004 with the release of what is objectively the greatest TV movie of all time, Bob the Builder in Snow Dunder. No one cares about the subtitle. I only know this film exists because I had a recording of it on an old VHS tape. You know, the ones that could have TV programs recorded onto them. Well, it's finally time to talk about this classic childhood film. I'm going back to my roots with this one. Hey, you see that big red subscribe button? You should do what Scoop's about to do to it. Oh, you stupid son of a- the film begins with Scoop the Digger waking up from a nightmare and talking about it to Pilchard the Cat, who can apparently understand him just like how he can understand her, something that will become much sillier later on. What if my dream comes true? What if I do let Bob down? I won't. I hope you're right. Another thing we'll see as we go on is that in this film, Scoop is on that Sigma male grind set. Since Wendy is competing in the Olympics, Bob has assigned Scoop to be the team, team leader, leader, which would turn out to be a poor decision since Scoop acts like a dickhead throughout the entire film. Uh, what's a love cabin? I know, I know. Oh, pick me, pick me. But we don't need to worry about that at the minute since everyone's favourite turnip nosed rap scallion has just arrived. Spuds the Scarecrow and his would be accomplice Travis the Tractor have been tasked with looking after Pilchard while Bob and the gang are away in another country. But Spud, being the lovable screw up that he is, loses the cat pretty quickly. Oh no! Quick, Travis! Pilchard's gone! Oh. Maybe she's followed Paul. Hurry, Travis! There she is! Master Travis! Scoop! Stop! Oh no! Wait here, Travis! Hurry, Spud! The ferry's leaving soon! Spuds dashes onto the team's cruise ship in the hopes of retrieving her and finds her with the egotist of the hour. Pilchard's hiding in your back digger, Scoop! Ha! Huh. That's the silliest thing I've ever heard. I think I'd know if there was a cat in my- <gasps> She runs around a bit more, and by the time Spud finally manages to grab her, it's too late. Look! But it wasn't my fault, Bob. I know, Spud. Looks like you and Pilchard are coming to Bobblesburg too. Some say this was all an orchestration by Spud. Thanks to his clumsiness, he's managed to obtain himself a free holiday. He's the kids' TV equivalent of Adam Sandler, except actually funny. <laughs> anyway, the team eventually arrive at Bobblesburg. Yeah, coincidentally, the country has the word Bob in its name, but somehow it gets weirder because apparently the place that they're originally from is named Bobville. Bobblesburg is having a Winter Games competition with our town, Bobs. So this is either a massive coincidence well, no, it can't be that. <laughs> this world is just unhealthily obsessed with this one guy who fixes people's roofs. Although I guess I can't blame them too much. Who wouldn't be obsessed with this guy? Anyway, the team meet up with Wendy and Bob goes to check into his hotel room. But since Scarecrow Boy showed up on a whim, they need to find a crib for him to chill in. Have you got a room for our friend here? Uh, he hasn't booked. Sorry, mate. We're completely chocker. He could share with Bob, though. <laughs> I, I, I don't mind sharing, Bob. We'll have great fun. So Bob and Spud head up to their room and Spud immediately starts getting wild. <laughs> Meanwhile, Bob has to reassure Scoop's insecure ass that he'll be a fine leader. What about Stop the worrying. I'm not worried. I've got the best team in the world. We can do anything. Do you really think so? I know so. Come on, man. It's Bob the Builder. He wouldn't have put you in a position like that if he didn't think you could do it. But Scoop is so desperate to impress Bobster that he lashes out at anyone for doing something kind of wrong. Just look at what happens here when Rolly makes an honest mistake which is easily fixable. Look out! Oh, oh no! <laughs> you big clumsy lump! <laughs> You just called a man a clumsy lump. Brother, how do you sleep at night? That's a natural question, like, how, how do you sleep? He's not a clumsy lump. Yes, Coop, that's a horrible thing to say. Um, you're right. I'm sorry, Rolly. I nah, man, you can't backtrack now. That's out in the open. You just said that. Hey, 
big banana. Oh yeah, and there's a new member of the team named Benny. He keeps referring to Scoop as Big Banana. You might think he's calling him big as a way of bigging him up, but now I think he's calling him a banana to insult him. He knows this guy needs to be put in his place. That's some king shit from Benny right there. The rest of the team become rightfully fed up with Scoop's BS, so they decide to go off and focus on their own passions. Muck wants to go sledging, Dizzy wants to ice skate, and Rolly wants to yodel with this yodeling skier lady and some G-O-A-T who won't stop following her. This brings up the interesting question of if we had sentient building equipment, would it be ethical to force them into a life of construction work, even if they have passions and ambitions elsewhere? Well, you know what I say? I say they should absolutely get to do their own stuff, especially if they have to pull up with this bozo. We're here to work, not have fun. It's not a holiday. But you won't let us do any work. Yeah, that's a good point, actually. You're just a show-off, Muck. You couldn't wait to come back here and boast. You don't want to be part of a team. Well, then, if that's what you think, you won't be wanting my help tomorrow, then. You got it. Fine by me. Look, Pim, I know it's our job to help this guy and everything, but I think this guy's a lost cause. He's obviously made up his mind. Why don't we just cut our losses and- Shut up, man! What are you trying to do? You need Rolly to flatten the ground. You're not a steamroller. So? So, you're not built for flattening things. And we'll need Dizzy. Or can you make cement now, too? Bruh, Benny's on some smoke. You need to stop trying to do everything yourself. I'm not. And let the rest of us help, too. And you need to stop being such a know-it-all and telling me what to do all the time. I'm older than you are, you know. That's why nobody wants to work with you. If you want to do it all by yourself, then that's fine by me. Fine. 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 And just when you think this yellow geezer has burnt every single bridge imaginable, he then manages to ruin his friendship with the god damn cat. What do you mean I haven't done the barriers properly? Excuse me, but you're a cat and I'm a building machine. I don't tell you how to catch mice, so don't tell me how to build. Wait, Pilchard, where are you going? Come back, I didn't mean it like that! Like, it's just so strange. How is the cat giving directions on how to build an ice rink? Is Pilchard studying to be an architect or something? Is this a human stuck in a cat's body? Has she spent so much time around construction equipment that she's starting to develop a higher intellect? How does Scoop know what she's saying? How is the cat saying anything? So many unanswered questions, but the biggest question of all? How is Scoop yelling at Pilchard to come back as if he he ain't just yelled at a blimmin' cat for trying to help him with a multi-machine job. I watched this film quite a few times when I was a kid and I never realised just how much of a plonker Scoop was throughout the entire thing. No wonder he was just kind of sidelined in the rest of the TV movies, because otherwise those would be unbearable. You know what? I'm sick of looking at this dude. Let's see what the main man Spud's been up to. Since Spud's basically living in a hotel for free, they needed to find him a job to do. And since there only seems to be one person running this entire hotel, Spud steps up for the job, Bob, and basically becomes Charlene's assistant. He does a good job at this for a while, even with Charlene messing with him, but she eventually takes the trolling a bit too far when she tells Spud to take the ski lift up to the top to offer drinks and snacks to the skiers. Spud, of course, being the goofy goober that he is, falls for the trick, but before he can be warned about it, it's too late. Snacks, sandwiches, cold drink. What? <laughs> oh my God! Did you see that? That was completely on the spot. No prior skiing experience whatsoever that we know of. But what's crazy is that this moment never would have happened if Scoop didn't mess things up so bad and eventually had to beg his friends to come back and help him. Can we fix it? Yes. 
Yes, we can. Moral of the story, if we don't have teamwork, we'll never be able to build arenas to house incredible Spud the Scarecrow bra moments. I think we've all learned something today. Scoop definitely better off. In conclusion, Bob the Builder snowed under is certainly iconic, but not nearly as iconic as Postman Pat the movie. It makes sense you're a Postman Pat because you know how to deliver. Oh man, that's deep. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, we might cover the other TV specials at some point since we got a lot more spud shenanigans to cover. I'm Monobrown Man. We need to do more videos with Teddy at some point and praise be Spud the Scarecrow. Hello.